Okay, we're going to do a rocker arm wear evaluation. And I've taken the rocker arm completely apart. I had to use a brass drift to knock um, the, the shaft out in a few places. Uh, so how we're going to evaluate this is uh, first looking in the manual. Uh, the specifications are here for the, for the diameter of the shaft, the bore size of the rockers and the pedestals, and the spring free length. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, what I did already was I, I, I measured the uh, shaft diameter with, with a micrometer. I, and I got it, the spec is 5.607 to 5.612. I had, it was all over the place, but uh, there were a bunch of them at 5.601 on one axis. You have to measure both axis, axes. So this is off by five to 10, you know, by six to 11 thousandths, uh, the, shaft, the, the, the shaft is. Uh, the rocker bore, the, these rocker bores um, were, were more worn in this direction than they were in this direction. And, uh, and I used a telescoping gauge um, and then double checked it in the micrometer. I checked it in the micrometer, went back and forth and went, found the wear on one of them and then went all the way through and found that the wear was pretty consistent across most of the rockers. And uh, the spec is 5 point, uh, 0.563 to 5.64. And I was fi finding I was just a little over spec. Um, on the vertical axis, five point, uh, like 3 ten thousandths over worn. Um, and then uh, on the horizontal spec, it, it looked like it was good right in the spec. So it was only worn in the, in the vertical axis. The pedestal bore I found was the same. Uh, the spring-free length, I did have a little bit of problems with this one. So these springs, the specification is supposed to be 2.71 inches. I found all of them uh, were 2.537. Uh, 2 so I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking that either the spec is wrong or all of my springs are compressed to exactly the same amount. That doesn't make sense. Now the other thing I need to look at for wear is my rocker arm faces and that would be these and you can see there's a wear pattern um, right there on, my, on the faces the rocker arm balls these um, and we also need to look for a bend in the shaft and you roll this on I have a cast iron um, cast iron um, table saw that has a very flat surface that I use for that kind of thing. But in this case, I'm not even going to bother. Non-applicable, because I know this is worn beyond spec, and I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, the other thing is push rods. You notice I don't have the push rods here. Uh, they're non-applicable. I'm going to be skimming my head, so I need the shorter push rods. So we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So now the question remains is whether or not these faces, whether this is so worn that I have to get, that I have to do something about, uh, about these, you know, how worn are these? So the way I chose to measure it, we'll come over here, is I took a, took my XY table on my drill press and I set up a dial test gauge. It's a little bit different than a, uh, than a dial indicator. This one goes from the side rather than the top, although you could use a dial indicator, but this is just easier. And by running my, uh, simply by run, by cranking on my, on my uh, XY, I can see how much it goes out. Now that, uh, that dial test indicator reads in thousands, in, in thousands. So we're seeing, that, whoops, I'm going off the end, going the wrong way. Let's get it back on. So now it's back on. It's on the regular surface at five. So let's see where we go. Now we're into the wear. It's still at five. And keep going. And it goes to, it went to seven. So we have um, two 
thousandths of an inch uh, wear between between this this part of the surface, two thousandths of an inch wear between this side of the surface and this side of the surface. So the uh, my understanding is that this surface is something like ten thousandths of it. Ten thousandths is the the hardness of it. So two thousandths, that much wear is not enough to be concerned about. Contrary opinion is in the Bentley manual where it says examine the rocker pads for wear and pitting and renew if uh, if unserviceable. Regrinding the pads as a method of servicing is not recommended. So we've got some conflicting recommendations from what I've seen online versus what's in the Bentley manual. One thing that is interesting if you look at it, let me turn the light on. If you look at it, the, the wear is, is kind of cockeyed to one side here. There's more wear, there's more wear on the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, there's a bigger ridge on the left side than there is on the right side. So perhaps this is a little cocked, but it wouldn't hurt to face this at two, uh, at two thousandths of an inch wear. That could, that's significant when you think about your valve settings. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, and there is an article, um, was it on the Buckeye Triumph? said the hot 74 hot TR6. I'll get to that when I do it, but I think I'm going to go ahead and face these myself. Um, Back to the uh, back to the rest of things. I think this decision here is definitely we need to get another one of these. And I think what I'm going to do is I think and, and I can bush these. You can buy bushings for uh, for these, and you can drill it out and bush it. And and again, there's explanation how to do this on the internet and so on, or you can have it done. Uh, I think. Um, given that it's, given that my wear factor is like less than a thousandth, I don't know as if I can set a valve that that tightly. So I think I may just leave those alone, get my new shaft, and see what I've got at that point. See if I get any any rock on it, or see maybe take a dial indicator and push up and down, see if I can get it to to move at all. But I think I may not push those. My other options are. I can send it away to rockerarms.com and they want nearly $300 to rebuild this. Uh, or uh, I can uh, buy new pieces. These are, these are $10 a piece or $9.95 a piece, something like that. And when you multiply that by 12, there's $120 there. But I've heard some reports on that these parts aren't always square, uh, that, the, uh, that the wear pattern uh, on the face ends up being crooked, canted because the 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 uh, face is not square to the to the hole. Um, so I'm thinking that these are good enough. Uh, now another option is I could do roller rockers, uh, but there's eight hundred dollars for that. And I, th I I'm thinking the more and more I think about this, I think I'm going to take some of this money I'm saving and put it in an overdrive transmission rather than you know overspend on parts like this. This is so very close. Uh, I think I'm, it's, it's, I'm going to get a, a, a hardened shaft, I think, check on the springs, and, uh, and then put it back together. I think I'm good to go there. Some resources I found helpful include uh, a, a short section in the, uh, in the Haynes manual on uh, rockers and rocker shaft examination. The section in the Bentley manual is also a little bit helpful. Um, another is on, on the web, I found this Costa Mesa R&D automotive machine shop. Unfortunately, the fellow has passed away, but uh, uh, he, he, it's, he, the site is uh, Fiat Nuts, and he has a great, um, he has a great video showing, uh, showing him uh, his Triumph TR series rocker arm rebuilding. Uh, it, that was very helpful. Another uh, resource I found helpful was uh, bullfire.net. Uh, he has a lot of great articles. Here's one on how he chose to um, rebush and regrind the pads on on his. Uh, let's see if we have the bushings first. Yeah. So here's. Here's his rebushing process where he, he drills and rebushes the uh, uh, the rockers, and then he shows how he made a little jig to regrind the pads, 
and so on. So I found that helpful. If you decide to go that route, I did find at British Frame, uh, British Frame and Engine, they do have um, some parts here. They have the, the, the rocker arm. Uh, you should have bushings, uh, which you would need to do that. Um, so another another way people go is they go with uh, this rockerarms.com. Uh, I look through their build process or their rebuild process and uh, the rocker arms they it looks like they grind uh, they grind the rocker arms um, and uh, and they chrome plate the shafts which is kind of unique and they rebush them so um, that, that's something to think about as well um, I did find also that Moss Motors carries a rocker arm uh, and rocker shaft kit that is bushed and honed to a clearance uh, for $300. Um, however, um, I did find uh, complaints online with the various vendors, like here's one on the six pack forum on check new rocker arms. You might want to look at this. This one happened to be British Parts Northwest's, uh, where the uh, uh, they had some of the parts were off center by a tenth of an inch uh, and, and so on. Um, so, um, uh, another th so something another thread I found helpful was in, in the TR register was this thread on rehardening rocker arm tips and it showed different people trying different methods of uh, of uh, rehardening the the tips once and here's a guy who plasma nitrided his and, and ended up being brittle and 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 knocking bits uh, off of it and so on so. Um, you know, I, I looked up rehardening and so on and, and decided, you know, that's not really the way I want to go. And I finally, I think in my final analysis, I think what I decided to do was just leave them alone and go to a Gunson click adjust. So really the reason to regrind those faces is to get a feeler gauge in there, right? Well, let's eliminate the feeler gauge and this click adjust, tap adjuster allows you to... Um, to set your valves without using a feeler gauge and, and uh, so with micro adjustment and so on. Uh, so I added it to my uh, wish list, uh, see if my wife gets it for me for Christmas. So I think that's what I'm going to do with my uh, with, with mine. I'm going to buy a new um, hardened shaft, I'm going to buy a new shaft, clean it all up, install it, uh, and uh, and go from there and then monitor it. Now, what I've done is I kept all the parts in order and I, I wired them together with baling wire, uh, all in order. So when I when I finally get those parts, I'll be good to go. I hope this was helpful. If uh, this was helpful to you, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd like it and subscribe to the channel. I try to document stuff that isn't exactly clear in the manuals. Uh, and so I'll remember how to do it and maybe uh, it might be helpful to you too if... Uh, if you're trying to go through the Haynes or the Bentley and, and not all this stuff is in there. So thanks for watching.